Welcome to worship. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the pictures of some of the many mothers of Vinji during the prelude as we started worship today. Uh, we give thanks for all the mothers, uh, especially those that are that are near and dear to us on this Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day, moms out there. Uh, today in worship, we're going to hear, I think it's a great message for Mother's Day. It's from Galatians chapter 3, and it's, uh, it's a letter in which the Apostle Paul reminds uh, the church and reminds all of us that we are loved, that we belong, that we matter, that we have value, that we are part of God's family and nothing will ever change that. And that sounds like a great message to me on this Mother's Day. And so uh, I'm looking forward to hearing that. Even if it is a Pastor Dane message, uh, I'm still looking forward to it today. Hey, I'm going to keep things short. There's just a few announcements. Uh, it's May, so that means a couple things are coming to an end pretty soon. And so we're going to celebrate the last Sunday school on May 16th. We're going to have our last Wednesday evening worship and our last confirmation session for the year, or the school year, that is, on May 19th. And gosh, then on, on May 23rd, there's a whole lot going on, and, and we're excited about it. First of all, it's Pentecost. And we're going to celebrate the birthday of the church. We're going to celebrate the activity of the Holy Spirit in worship on May 23rd. It's also going to be the first Sunday that we're just going to live stream worship. So if you're watching this right now, it probably means that you've gotten used to watching uh, our pre-recorded worship services. Worship will still be online. Uh, that's not going to change at all. But rather than having a recorded message, we're just going to bring you right in through the, the gifts of technology. We're going to share that camera view from what's going on live in the sanctuary at Vinji. And then that's going to stay up and you can watch it on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever you want to get around to watching it. It'll still be there. Just a little different, but not that big of a deal. Hey, May 23rd, also we're going to celebrate our high school graduating seniors. They've, uh, they've been through a lot. They've done some really good work. We want to say thanks be to God for them uh, and send them off to whatever is next with a prayer and a, and a special gift. We also want to celebrate you because this is kind of a transitional moment as we change how we're doing that online worship. We want to give thanks to God for being present in all of the great work that, that you have done, that Vinji has done uh, during the COVID pandemic. And so we're going we're gonna to celebrate that. We're going to say thank you. We have a special thank you gift uh, for you as well and, and everyone. So come to worship here at Vinji on May 23rd and, uh, and you get a gift for it. How awesome is that? Again, so grateful that you are joining us in worship. It's, uh, it's good to see you virtually. Uh, enjoy worship today. Christ is risen and has given us a new life. Knowing that God offers us mercy and hope, let us confess the ways that we have fallen short of God's desires for us, Almighty God. You love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. Sometimes we walk away from neighbors in need because we are too wrapped up in our own concerns. Forgive us for the times we have acted with evil, pride, neglect, or indifference. Whether we believe it or not, Jesus Christ never leaves us nor forsakes us. Whether we believe it or not, God is always around us and loves us for who we are. Whether we believe it or not, we are forgiven. Let us live in a new life that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks to be God. God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. <laughs> and also with you. Let us pray. Lord of mercy and grace, with great joy we give you thanks for the way in which you make us, you children. God, we know that this is not our own doing, but because of the saving work of Jesus Christ, Praise be, to, praise be to you for your abundant and never-ending love and forgiveness. Amen. 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 A reading from Luke. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give a tenth of my income, but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Hey, Justin, you know, Mother's Day, am I right? Every day is Mother's Day. They get every day. Every day is about them. I know. It's like they get credit for everything. It's a tough life. Yeah, I mean, can you think of all the things we've had to do for these mothers? I'll tell you what. My wife is supposed to put the kids to bed every night. Get this. Like, four months ago, I had to do it. She was super sick. I had to put the kids to bed. You know what, just the other week, I had to do all the dishes, all by myself. All of them? Yeah. She didn't dry them or no, put them away or I did anything? It all. Oh. She's supposed to do that all hey, the time. I tell you what, there was one time I had to change a diaper. You're kidding. No, it's true. I, I got pictures and everything. I've never changed a diaper in my life. I believe that. Yeah. It's like, it's like they expect us to be parents with them or something. Okay, I think I've heard enough of this. Uh, I know that you two are both pretty competitive, but uh, this day isn't a competition. God's love shows up through all of our caring relationships. But today, especially for you two, we are thinking about and remembering the ways that God shows up through our mothers. So I know this is going to be pretty hard for you, but can you think of just a couple examples of how God's love has shown up through the caring relationships of the mothers in your lives? Uh, I don't know. Let me think on it a minute, Kate. Yeah, could you give us some examples? I, nothing is really coming to mind. Okay, okay, these two need some help. Can you help me think of some examples? One way my mom cared for me growing up was by spending time with me and reading me fun stories before bed. Moms care for us by tucking us in at night to help us get a good night's sleep. Sometimes they show us they love us by doing yard work and gardening and keeping our houses and yards in good condition so that we can live in them and enjoy them. Our moms go grocery shopping for us. They feed us. And they make us good food, even when we are picky eaters, to help us grow big and strong.
Moms help us get ready in the morning to bring us to school. And they show us they love us by playing fun games with us. And then by playing more games with us. And then by playing even more games with us. We love playing games with our moms. And sometimes our moms care for us by going to work to help provide what we need for our family and to make sure that we have what we need to live. Now do you guys get it? Yeah, I, I guess that moms really do do a couple of things. A couple of things, yeah. Okay. In the Bible, there's a passage that talks about God like a mother hen. God is like a mother hen who longs to gather her chicks under her wings, it says. This passage helps us remember that God is like a mother who cares for us and loves us. And so uh, this week we remember that, that God shows up through our moms and through all of our caring relationships. And so from us here, even from Dane and Justin, Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Day. Before we get into our reading for this morning, I want to acknowledge that this is probably not the reading you would be hoping to hear on Mother's Day. Today we get this angry letter from Paul that has very little to do with moms. Paul is challenging the Galatians to think about what is at the core of their faith. And Paul is upset because the Galatians have been discussing what makes a Christian a true Christian. And what makes someone a part of that early Christian church? And the biggest part of the argument is whether Gentiles have to follow specific Jewish laws to be included, including the biggest mark of Judaism, circumcision. Again, probably not the topic you were hoping to talk about on Mother's Day. This is, though, where we pick up our reading for today with an argument from Paul, a former Jew, about what really is at the heart of the heart of things and what really does make us a part of God's family, and how we really find justification or belonging with God. So now, without further ado, our reading from Galatians. Paul writes, You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. But when Cephas, also named Peter, came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision faction. 
And the other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know, we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Okay, a question. Can you think of a time when you felt like you just didn't belong? I can think of lots of times when I felt that way. Sometimes it happens when you move to a new community and you try to fit in. Sometimes it happens when you start going to a new book club with some other moms and they all seem smarter than you or like they've actually, you know, read the book. Sometimes it happens when you start a new fitness class and you see all those super fit people standing around you and you think, hey, what gives? I thought I was taking this class to be around people who had much more belly fat than me so I could boost my own self-esteem because they like donuts just as much as I do. I didn't come to a class to be around people who make me feel bad. There are lots of times when we can feel like we just don't belong. But the time that comes to mind for me this week is the very first week I went to seminary. I was really nervous. I'd moved cross country from California to Minnesota, and I was all on my own, not knowing what to expect when I arrived. I don't know what picture you have of pastor training school, but mine as a 22-year-old recent college graduate was the picture of a bunch of monks and nuns praying six hours a day, reading and quoting the Bible for another six hours a day, and just making sure they never sinned all the rest of the hours of the day. And here I was, remember, a recent college graduate who knew full well what I was like in college, and I'll be honest, I wasn't that good of a person. I may not have been a terrible person or gotten into lots of trouble, but let's just say I wasn't free from sin. What would all these monks and nuns at the seminary think of me, I thought. What if I didn't know all the books of the Bible, or if I got caught breaking a rule, you know, like coveting my neighbor's ox or something? What would I do if I didn't belong there? Now, my first tip that this was going to be a rough beginning was when I was hoping for an invitation to go and have a beer at the end of the first week with a few other students and let down after that long initiating experience. That's what we would have done on a weekend in college. Have fun, let loose, and have a drink with regular people. But when I talked to a few of my dorm mates at the end of the week about what they were doing, they told me, they would be spending their Friday night reading children's books to each other, namely The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, out loud, complete with voices. Now, let me repeat that. They were going to read a Christian children's book together to each other out loud on a Friday night. Now, don't get me wrong. I love kids' books. I read them to my children all the time. But this was not exactly what I envisioned as a good time for an adult letting down on a Friday night after a stressful week. I wondered then and there if I wasn't cut out for this pastor school thing. I wondered if I wasn't good enough to be there like these other people. I wondered if I had chosen the wrong path, that maybe pastors and maybe the good Christians in general were better than me the Christians were supposed to have it all together all the time. And maybe, I thought, just maybe, I didn't belong. Maybe you've had an experience like that in your life where you didn't 
feel like you belonged. Maybe it was when you moved to a new community or you joined a new group or when you felt like you just weren't good enough. I wonder if this is a bit of what the Gentile Christians felt when they first joined the church Paul was talking to in Galatia. They'd surely given up much to become Christians. They'd chosen to join a religion that wasn't sanctioned by the state. It was pretty much the newest religion on the block, and many of them may have been shunned by their families for joining up. But they joined this church because they felt called from God to do so. And then when they started attending the church, what did they find? They were told, well, sorry, you don't quite fit in yet. They weren't on the same level as everyone else because they weren't the Jewish Christians like the rest, and they were sort of second-class citizens. If they wanted to be a part of the insider group, the ones who truly belonged, they had to do some initiations first. They had to do all the same Jewish practices as the rest of the people. They had to eat the right foods. They had to obey the same traditions. And most importantly of all, that's right, they had to be circumcised. If you want to know more about what that means, go ask your mom. Pastor Dane won't go into the details here, but needless to say, these were the kinds of things you had to do, the works of the law you had to do to have a sense of belonging in this church. Imagine being one of these people who is joining this bunch of Christians for the very first time. How would you feel? You'd come expecting a religion where all are welcome, where you had a place at the table. Then you were met with this message that there were just a few more things you had to do. You can imagine that you just might not feel a sense of belonging, somehow like you didn't measure up. This is why Paul gets so upset with these Galatians. They are putting up walls between people and God's love. They're exchanging the best news in the world that Jesus died and rose again for you and me, that Jesus offers us new life for another piece of news. They traded it for the news that you can belong, but only when you do the right things. And you can belong, but only when you have a certain way of behaving. And you can belong, but only when you follow the traditions and when you fit in. And so this is why Paul writes this angry letter to remind these first Christians to let you and me know today what really gives us a sense of belonging. It isn't about us measuring up. It isn't about us getting it right all the time. It isn't about anything else but God's love for us. And to be a true Christian, to belong, is nothing more than falling into the immeasurable grace of the God who knows you and the God who loves you just as you are. There are many times in this world where it seems like everything and everyone is telling us we don't measure up. All the messages we get day in and day out tell us that we have to do certain things, that we have to act a certain way, that we have to have the right kinds of things, that we have to have it all together. And if we don't have enough of the right stuff, and if we don't do enough of the right things, if we don't have it all together, then we just don't belong. In the context of this world, then, what does it mean to have the promise that our belonging has nothing to do with where we come from, and nothing to do with what we have, and nothing to do with what we do. What does it mean that our true sense of belonging comes from being known by God and wrapped in God's loving embrace? You know, as I think back on my first experience of seminary, in many ways it took a while for me to feel like I belonged. It wasn't until I met some really good friends, the ones who weren't your typical monks and nuns at all, but real people, people a lot like you and me, people who made me feel like I was supposed to be there. I met Pastor Justin at seminary, and you know how messed up he is. 
And yet he knew it wasn't his job to be perfect, and he knew whatever he did, it would never get him in God's good graces any more than he was. Rather, he and my other good friends reminded me how God loves us just as we are and that we all belong to God. Of course, another friend I met at seminary would be my future wife, Ingrid. To be honest, I don't know if I knew what belonging was until I met her. For some reason, she liked me for who I was, and she got to know me for all those faults and failings, and she still liked me for who I was, even loved me. I don't get it. But especially on this Mother's Day, I feel like I need to say out loud how this woman gives me a sense of belonging and how she holds it all together in our family. This mom constantly reminds my children and me that we all belong in what she does. And what's more, she shows us in real and tangible ways what God's unconditional love looks like in this world and where each of us finds our sense of belonging. So how about you? Do you have a mom in your life or someone else who makes you know you are loved and accepted just as you are? Can you think of a time where someone made you feel like you belonged? Even if you can't think of one of these experiences, even if the messages of this world tell us we don't belong in one way or another, may you hear this promise. You have a God who knows you for who you are and who loves you for who you are. You and I belong to God, and nothing can take that away. Amen.
please join with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me as we pray together. Good and gracious God, we know that there are many days when it seems that we do not measure up, when sometimes we feel like we don't have enough of the right stuff, or we don't do enough, or that we simply feel that we ourselves are not enough. Help us to remember that our worth is not based on what we have or on what we do or who we are, but remind us that our worth and our value and our belonging is based on you and what you have done for us. Remind us that we are your beloved children, and that we belong to you, and that nothing can ever take that away. Lord, as your children, we celebrate all our mothers today. We remember the mothers who have gone before us, who gave us love and joy through their sacrifices. We celebrate our mothers who are with us today, and we give thanks for the life and the love that they share. We also give thanks for those women who have not given birth to us, but who in so many ways are mothers to us. We lift up all the places in our world that could use your love and your grace. We pray for those who are hungry, for those who are homeless, for those who are sick, for those in the cycle of addiction, for those who are struggling with mental and physical health. And God, we pray for those and we lift up the names of members right here in our own community who are in need of your healing touch. God, this morning we pray for Mary Nelson and Phil Carlson, Pastor Bill Miller, Sonia Westry, Artie Westhoff, Judy Gort, Steve Fisher, Joe Truby, Emma Johnson, and Helen Loniger. Lord, help us to be a part of bringing your good news to this world. Help us make others feel welcome. Help us allow others to, to find a sense of belonging and love in the way that we treat them. Help us to live out your good news, your gospel of generosity and forgiveness, to create a place and a church in our world where all lives are welcome, where all are loved, and where all feel that they belong. We pray all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
In our world, we often hear messages that we don't belong in one way or another. But here at this table, God calls us each by name and loves us just as we are and welcomes us all into God's loving embrace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray. God, God of new life, God, God of great gifts, we give you thanks for the life and the hope that you give. With the news of Easter living in our hearts, we offer our gifts and our lives back to you. May they be a sign of our gratefulness as we join in your life-giving work in the world. Amen.
At this time, we invite you to share in communion in your own home. As you do so, may you hear these words for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now let us all join in the feast where indeed all are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. We have worshipped the risen Lord in song and prayer. Now our journey leads us out into the world. We go strengthened by God and by each other. We are ready to love and serve. We are ready to share God's love with one another. As you go, God is with you. May you be blessed by a renewed sense of hope, knowing that the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus is equipping you with every good thing. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. the truth. 